now from the makers of Cold Water Irma. Mrs. Ruth Boardman took a quick glance round John Steed's apartment. She noted the things lying on the occasional table. Change, keys, fountain pen, and Steed's gold hunter watch. I came to thank you for your tact. I know you saw me lunching with Ben Jago and the bull and bear. The fact is that when your husband is so many years older than you are... Oh, I, I understand. A, a well-known, even infamous character like Ben Jago, it could be misunderstood, misinterpreted. Think nothing of it, Mrs. Boardman. You're a merchant banker's wife. Mr. Jago is an investor. Seems a perfectly natural liaison. As I said, you are very tactful. Not tactful, optimistic. You see, I always admire a woman with a past. What is so optimistic about it? Just the hope that history can be persuaded to repeat itself. I think you'd better offer me a drink. Don't you, John? Of course. Uh, make yourself at home, Ruth. Steed moved off to get some drinks, and Mrs. Bordman glided over to the table, opened her handbag, and took out a gold hunter watch, which she exchanged for John Steed's. By the time Steed returned with the drinks tray, she was seated on the settee, smiling quite innocently. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. wonderful new fabric conditioner that not only softens but actually rinses out hardness, rinses in a new kind of softness. Comfort leaves your wash refreshingly young and bouncy again. Just a little comfort in the final rinse gives a lot of comfort to your wash. Softness is a thing called comfort. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We got strawberry and vanilla. Episode 5 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel both get a little nearer to the truth and find out the man who knows how to... dial a deadly number. To all outward appearances, John Steed was content to allow his relationship with Henry Boardman, the merchant banker, to continue in a spirit of friendly competition. Boardman had recognized that Steed knew wine and was able to name most of the rare ones by taste. Steed also respected Boardman as a tough, conservative banker of the old school. But Steed wasn't sure how much Boardman was implicated in the deaths of six company chairmen. It looked as though Steed was going to sit back and let things work themselves out. He had a date with Mrs. Peel in the Bull and Bear that night and dressed for it leisurely after Mrs. Boardman had left. But Mrs. Peel wasn't so casual. She was sure there was far more to learn from the premises of Warner's answering service, and she chose the cover of darkness to get into the building. Hmm. The workshop, all right. Kinky one, too. Mrs. Peel found herself in Fitch's workshop, which was lined with clocks, but none of them going. A large TV screen dominated the workbench, plenty of papers stacked around, and a series of photographs. Mrs. Peel flipped through them. One of Steed. One of Steed. A blown-up photograph of Steed with a wine glass in his hand. And his gold watch in the other one. How when could this have been taken? Got it. That wine-tasting party in Boardman's cellar. A close-up of Steed's watch. A 
This must have been taken from from that TV screen and then enlarged. But why? Well, well. <gasps> interesting, isn't it? Don't move. I have a revolver at your head. Fitch, Steed's watch. You've done something to Steed's watch. <laughs> Next time he opens it, it'll be the last time he opens it. You press the cover which protects the face of the watch. The cover will spring open and that'll be that. Do you like my workshop? I neither like it nor understand it. My clocks are on the walls. Each one represents a person. This one I shall dedicate to John Steed. It's pretty, isn't it? I shall wind it up later and stop it as soon as Steed is dead. At the exact moment he dies. It will be a sort of monument to him. And to my ingenuity, of course. You see, for most people, life is ruled by time. They are, you know. Except for me. I rule time. And time... The time that's allotted to Steed is limited, strictly limited, <laughs> like all these other clocks. That one's Todd Hunter's, that one's Ewell's. And five others? All those company chairmen? <laughs> yes, of course. One doesn't get so much opportunity in peacetime. The war now, that, that was my bumper harvest. Eight panzer officers in one night. Eight. And an Italian captain. That's his clock, there. 3.45 in the morning. It's quarter to four a.m. Uh, if promotion could have been won through that sort of pleasure, he would have been a field marshal. They were happy days. You're quite a dealer in death, aren't you, Mr. Fitch? Dealer in death. I like that. <laughs> but now... Uh, 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 What's wrong? Losing your nerve? Uh, I've never killed a woman before. <laughs> Silly to be so squeamish... I'll use something subtle. Perhaps an ultrasonic injection. They don't even perforate the skin. Or a tasteless poison. It's an old favorite of mine. But it must be neat, clean and quick. Oh, yes, I must have my murders neat. That's most essential. So don't worry too much. You hardly feel a thing. I promise you. <laughs> In the bar of a bull and bear, a waiter served John Steed with a balloon glass of brandy and removed the empty one. Um, you sure there haven't been any messages? No messages, Mr. Steed. You checked? I've double-checked. No lady named Mrs. Peel? No, sir, no one of that name. Steed slipped a hand into his pocket and drew out the watch. But before he could attempt to open it, the waiter said, It's nine-five, sir. You should get the Wall Street clause and prices if you're interested. Oh. Oh, thank you. Steed slipped the watch back into his waistcoat pocket and sipped his brandy reflectively. Then he took out the watch again and gave it a good, hard look. Catching on, Steed. The lights weren't full on in Henry Boardman's penthouse, just one small table light by an easy chair. There were footsteps outside. The door to the main lounge opened... Ruth Boardman entered, switched on the light. Ew. What are you doing here? John Steed was sitting in the chair, idly swinging his watch from the end of its chain. I hope you don't mind my intruding. I told your manservant it would be all right. I thought I'd like to repay your call. You left so abruptly after your drink. Also, I wanted to see your husband. Uh, Henry, he isn't here. I... I uh... Ruth Boardman's eyes hardly left the watch as Steed continued to swing it to and fro. Not in? Oh, too bad. It, it's nothing terribly important. Just I thought I'd drop by and maybe sample another glass of that excellent brandy. Uh, well, well, yes, of, of course. Mrs. Boardman, there's something wrong. You look quite pale. Uh, Mr. Steed... John, I, I, I'm very tired. Oh, I'm I, so sorry. Well, where is your husband? Oh, he, he, he's dining out. And when do you expect him back? Uh, Ten, eleven. I, I don't know. Steed started fiddling with the watch again. Eventually, he stood up and prepared to open the watch, saying... Ten o'clock, you say, but surely it's nearly that now. Let's see. No, no, no. You, you mustn't open that. Mrs. Boardman stepped forward and grabbed Steed's wrist. No, no. Do you mind telling me why not, Mrs. Boardman? Caught her there, all right, didn't you, Steve? Fitch, in his workshop, wound up the clock dedicated to John Steed and placed it on the bench. 
He then started working on the inside of an antique shepherd shepherdess clock. There was a sudden coded ring at the door. Good evening. May I come in? Yes, yes, this is the place, all right. Your name has been recommended to me. By whom? What for? I've um, had some sort of trouble with my watch. A golden hunter watch, you know the model? What sort of trouble? I can't seem to open it. Why not? Uh, the button that releases the gold outer cover is stuck. Steed reached into his pocket, produced the watch, and swung it to the full length of its chain. Here, you have a go. Fitch backed away, a frightened expression on his face. It might just be stuck. I... I, I... I can't think how it happened. I, I'm sure if you had a try... But Fitch continued to retreat. Steed suddenly stopped swinging the watch and caught it neatly with the other hand. He made to press the button that opened the outer cover. Fitch gave a yell... No, no! ...and dived for cover. Steed pressed the button and the cover swung open. Oh, a little off key, wouldn't you say? At that moment, a loud bumping noise drowned the sound from the watch. Why don't you come out from behind that workbench and answer the cupboard door? Most inhospitable. Oh, very well. Steed crossed the floor and unlocked the door of the cupboard. Mrs. Peel fell into the room. <laughs> Mrs. Peel? Barbados, one minute, room cupboard the next. Oh, Steed, for heaven's sake, untie my hands. But before he could do so... Steed, watch it! Fitch, what's he got? Bicycle pump gun. Marquis used them during the war. I invented it, Steed. It's neat and tidy, just as I told you, Mrs. Peel. Steed looked at Fitch, who was covering them as though he was holding a sten gun. The clock Fitch had started was nearly at eleven o'clock. Oh, well done, Major. You got here just in time. You don't think I'm going to be caught by that old trick. A clock beginning to strike distracted Fitch. Steed leapt forward and grabbed the pump. <laughs> Fitch held on grimly, using the pump as a lever. Steed swung Fitch round and crashed him against the wall. The pump gun landed in Fitch's middle and exploded. Fitch's body, thrown back by the explosion, toppled over, crashing all his clocks to the floor. There was silence. Temple's fugitive. How did you find me? I mean, find out about him. Ruth Boardman. Just like that? Mm, yes, and a modicum of charm, of course. The bleepers. Fitch fixed them all, of, of course. Of course. Anyone ringing the right channel caused the bleep and also caused a capillary needle to jump into the heart of the man who was wearing the bleeper. Neat, no fuss. Neat, no fuss. Yes, that gives me an idea. See you later. Hey! Hey, where are you going? What about me? Let me loose. Hey, Steve! Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, excuse me. I nearly forgot my umbrella. Bye for now. I'll see you. Hey, Steve! Come back! Come back, Steve! Come back! Gosh, Mary, you're lucky to have such a hard-working servant. <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't got a maid. Well, how on earth do you manage to keep your floors so clean and shiny? Ah, that's easy. I use Duo. Duo? Yes, Duo, the self-shining floor cleaner. It's so easy because Duo cleans and polishes in one go. How do you mean? Well, Duo lifts all the dirt out of the floor and dries to a bright, long-lasting shine all by itself. So when you use Duo, you don't have to worry about polishing. No, Duo cleans and polishes in one go. Go. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user, like Mrs. Bodington. My wash is beautiful, and I'm very proud of it. There's nothing like cold water Omo. No dirt can stand up to Omo. Over a million housewives have proved it. It cleans best. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel. Is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden. Mm -hmm.